Hi, welcome back into the Rue de Fleur studio today. My name is Janice Baylor and I am here to guide you through uh, our next lesson in how to make a patchwork minky blanket. So by now you should be on to the step where we actually connect the uh, beautiful patchwork top that we made in previous lessons to the very soft minky backing. So we're all here, now we need to do the finishing work. So to finish it up, we need to trim off our excess and I will show you how to roll that over and make a beautiful folded edge to the blanket and miter the corners, which will give it a really professional finished look. It kind of like um, does the mitering like a picture frame with a really simple fold technique and we'll top stitch it all down and then you'll have yourself a beautiful cuddly, unique blanket. So here are all of the supplies that you'll need for the project and everything to get this wrapped up. Stay tuned. For today's project, you will need your grid mat and ruler, a rotary cutter. I would say that this is necessary above scissors. It will make lining things up and trimming so much easier um, in conjunction with our ruled mat. You will need probably some pins because we are going to do some folding and tucking and they will hold everything in place. And I love wonder clips for this project. So they just clip onto the edge of your material. And when you're using a very large quantity, like we are going to go the entire perimeter of our top here, they're just so much easier to work with, I find, than pins. They tend to slip out a little bit less in this particular uh, use, and I just find them really easy to pop off quickly as I'm working my way around something and sewing. So I highly recommend grabbing yourself a box of Wonder Clips. We'll probably use every single one of these today in the project. Okay, to get started, I like to lay my quilt all the way back out on the floor again and smoothen everything down. So make sure it's nice and flat so that we can get our straight edges. And then I just start in one corner and I am going to line, I'm gonna put my mat underneath of both layers and I am going to use my gridded ruler and line that up. I do one inch off of the edge of my patchwork top. So I will not be cutting my patchwork. I am only going to be trimming off the excess minky blanket that I do not need. So I am going to trim, uh, I'm lining up the one inch mark with the top patchwork top, and then I will trim the outside away. And then when I fold it over, all of that will get rolled on top and cover the edge of the patchwork top. So I just go ahead and trim and slide everything up as I work. There you can see my nice one inch perimeter that I will end with. And I just work my entire way around the top. And if it's not perfect in a few spots, it really doesn't matter that much. You won't notice it. I would just say try to be as precise as possible. After you've cut the entire way around your blanket, you can pick it up from the floor and take a few minutes to clean up all of the fuzzies that you've created. Okay, now that we have a approximate one inch all the way around our perimeter of our blanket, there's the backing, here is our top. I like to still leave the pins in at this point just because it 
helps you keep everything lined up and a little bit more in control as we work. But I basically lay flat one corner. So you'll wanna do this up on a desk or perhaps your ironing board somewhere where you can stand comfortably. And I just begin at one side and I'm going to first fold the raw edge of the minky in toward the raw edge of my patchwork top. And then I'm going to fold it over one more time so that all of the raw edges are enclosed and then and then I just hold it in place with my two fingers there and I just clamp that with a wonder clip and then when I get down here to the corner I'm going to fold in toward the raw raw to raw fold it over and then I have this little tail that peeks out over the edge here and I'm just going to take that piece and I turn the corner there of the rolled edge down toward the raw edge of my top. And that, see how it starts to make the little triangle bit? You can hold that in place with the clip there while you work. And then turn in the other raw edge on the other side of the corner and then just bring that up over and you will get a mitered corner. And then what you can do there is I actually prefer to stick pins in the corner because it holds it a little bit more firmly in place. So I'll stick a pin in there and a pin coming from this direction and then you just work your way around. So folding the raw edge of the minky into the raw edge of your blanket top and then folding it over one more time completely conceals the edge. So I'll show you again now that I've come up on another corner and I'm just going to come down close to it, rolling over like we did before, getting my little rolled over tail. Then you can pin this in place right here to hold it. Fold the top corner of your rolled piece down to meet the raw edge of your patchwork top. Then fold this raw edge into the raw edge like we have done all the way down the side and then roll that whole thing up and you get a little point. And I pin that in place, pin into all that folded bit to really hold it. And then it's a little hard to see with the um, swirly minky, but you can see that it creates a little triangle fold there in the corner which is the miter and it gives it a really nice finish and a really firm finish there in the corner of the blanket and then we just keep working our way around doing the same thing until you are back to your beginning point once you have everything clipped and pinned in place we're ready to throw it on our machine and get top stitching all of the way around. So I am going to just focus on making sure that all of my raw edges are tucked away underneath. And then I'm going to sew just about an eighth of an inch in from the rolled edge that covers onto the top. And I'm going to use a zigzag stitch, which does work with the walking foot. You will want your walking foot on still for this part. Because um, again, we're working with a, a, lot, a lot of fabric and a thickness level and, that the walking foot just really helps us with. So we are just going to pick whichever side you want to start on, um, kind of move some clips out of the way if you have to. Um, I think it's really nice 
it, we do need to clip and it does help you control the fabric at this phase but as you start to sew the fabric will naturally kind of try to form into the shape too so it's a combination of doing the correct amount of prep and then holding and guiding things as you work it through the machine and the natural tendency of the fabric to want to fall into place okay so i'm going to go ahead and pop this onto my machine i keep my pins to the one side so they're easy for me to uh, pick things out and put them away as i go and my little clip bucket is down here right on the other side of the throat of my machine i try to keep the bulk of the material on my table off to the side and only pull through my machine at this point the little edge that I need to have in there okay and that way you don't get a bunch bulked up so think about that as you work then go ahead and place your walking foot down into your machine select your stitch I'm again going to work with a zigzag and then you can go as slow or as fast as you need to and just gently work your way through. And I'm going to back stitch at the start and stop and then just work my way around. Making sure that I am catching that rolled edge as I go. and removing the pins and clips as I work. As you come down into your corner, I just carefully remove that pin that was kind of facing the opposite direction before I get too close to it. And you just kind of have to gently hold it in place with your fingers till you get down here onto the next turn. I like to go over the turn, so down the whole way across my next piece to just about the edge, the complete outside edge. Lift the foot if you need to to make sure that your fold gets caught. Then I will back stitch until I come up in line with where I want to head going in the next direction. I just feel that this really secures the corner since there's a lot of material there. Then with your needle down, you rotate to your next straight edge. So turn the whole quilt now and rotate. Drop your foot. I'm going to start with my back stitch working back to the very back edge. And then I'm coming forward, lining it up again with the edge of the rolled over Nikki. Remove that pin and work your way down. I'm gonna pull you in nice and tight for this corner so you can really see what I'm doing here. Just come down into your corner. I'm removing that pin that was facing the opposite direction holding my fold. And I'm coming down, I'm holding that with my finger. Just be careful that you don't get too close to your needle. You don't wanna sew your finger, that really hurts. Um, and I am coming all the way down over my fold. I have, you might need to lift your walking foot to make sure you don't catch your fold, but come all the way down into it to the very edge of your fabric. And that pin just wanted to come out. And then I'm going to hit my back button and go back and line myself up with where I want to turn to. Leave my needle down, lift the presser foot, Pivot the entire blanket top, drop my presser foot. Now I'm going to hit my back button and go the whole way to the back, very back edge there, catching all of the folded material. Come back, 
If you hadn't already, remove that pin and come down the next side. If you have a tag or label that you would like to add, I discreetly add it to a lower corner. Um, I think that this gives a nice finished and professional look and lets people know where the quote came from. You can buy handmade tags on Etsy. It's a great place to look for custom things. Some people will even help you with logo design or you can hand write with a fabric marker. And the final step in the process is simply to remove all of your pins and put them back from whence they came. And here is our finished blanket. I'm sure my son will love it. I mean, it's so massive. I can totally disappear. Um, thank you so much for joining me. I hope that you found this project fun and helpful and encouraging and that you will like and subscribe so that as I do more lessons, you can join me for those and never miss out. Um, please give a comment below if you plan to try the project or tag me in social media at LaRue de Fleur if you work on this project in the future using the videos. But thank you so much and... See you next time.